If you've lost track of all of the great new features over the past several uh, beta releases of Ecamm Live, well, don't worry, I've got a roundup of them all coming up right now. Hello, welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec, and this video is going to be something slightly different because it's actually an excerpt from my uh, recent live stream. Uh, and uh, I do a weekly live stream on uh, Fridays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, 5 a.m. for me here in Thailand. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, do look out for that. And uh, I always look forward to uh, welcoming people to join me on the stream as well. So, if you just want to come and hang and chat, then uh, do look out for that. And then, yeah, I always put a join link up so we can come and uh, have a little chat about whatever the topic of the day is. And, and today, the topic happened to be all of the latest beta releases. And in particular, it was about really when all of these features actually do hit the final uh, version of uh, version 3.9 of Ecamm Live, it's going to be quite a massive leap for people who haven't been on the, uh, the beta uh, release schedule to uh, try out all these features because to, to me, we're on beta 4. Uh, beta 3 was a sort of incremental update where they did just a couple of little minor fixes in that, but 1, 2 and 4 have been, to my mind, they could have just been major releases. There were so many features packed into them that all were worthy of a uh, a, a final release to my mind so uh, I was blown away by it and when I started going through looking at like what had actually been added in I'd kind of forgotten <laughs> all of the great stuff that was added in in the earlier releases so uh, the earlier beta so that was the point of the live stream today that's what I sort of focused on uh, mostly uh, and so what I thought I'd do is because obviously there was more things in the live stream as well. I do a little update on my 360 videos, 365 videos in a year challenge and some other things that I'm doing and stuff like that. And then obviously the chat at the end. So uh, I thought some people may appreciate just a rundown of all of the features. Uh, and so that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to cut straight over to the uh, the excerpt of uh, all of the features. Uh, and then I will leave a list in the, uh, the description as well of all of these features uh, as well. So this is just basically a rundown of them. If you do want to see actual full demos of all of these features then I have done a video on beta 1, 2 and 4 as well so I'll leave a link to those in the description if you want to uh, go and actually watch those full videos but for now I'm going to hand straight over to myself from the past <laughs> and I'll see you on the other side. Uh, so what I thought I'd do is just literally run through the things and uh, so I've sort of grouped them into uh, loosely into different sort of components or different things that they've added. Uh, so the first one is profiles. Um, this is something that lots of people had asked for and lots of people had workarounds because people use them for different things. I, how many profiles have I got? Let me just have a quick look because uh, I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eight, eight, 12 profiles. So I've got tw basically 12 different use cases for Ecamm Live. Uh, now previously the way that this was done is I had a whole load of folders and each folder had a load of uh, different scenes and things like that in it. So that's not really uh, ideal because, um, well, it's just too many, to <laughs> too many to have in your list for a start, isn't it? Um, so having profiles means you can basically have a whole set of uh, a whole setup for um, one particular show or one particular use case that you've got for it. Uh, and then you can just switch between them. Uh, and so that means that you don't, you don't have all of your... Um, you know, all of the overlays for one show are all in the list of overlays for the other way. So you've got a massive big list. It just makes it so much easier to, uh, to to work with, really. The other thing about it is it's actually the way that the profiles work. So it's it's it becomes like a package, basically, that has all of the assets for that profile within it. And that means that you can just drag the profile out or rather export it, I should say. Uh, and then you can send it to someone. And then they can open it up and they've got all of the things in it. So they've got all of the videos and uh, uh, image overlays and things like that all contained in one file. So it makes it great for uh, backup purposes, but also just for sharing between uh, between other people as well. So uh, that is really, really helpful <laughs> as a feature. And like I say, that one alone is something that a lot of people had asked for. So that's going to be pretty good to see that uh, implemented. Uh, the next one is <laughs> uh, formatting. So there's now lots of different ways that you can uh, format. Now specifically really I'm talking about overlays uh, but it does apply to other stuff as well. So uh, I had a list here. There's quite a lot of these. So um, rounded corners on overlays <laughs> like I've got on my uh, my camera border. Actually this is still a graphical overlay that I'm using here but to be able to put these sort of rounded corners on camera overlays on uh, screen sharing overlays which we'll obviously come to that was a new feature in itself um, uh, and uh, text overlays as well. 
We've got the new shape, the, the squircle for the uh, the camera overlays, which uh, I actually really like that. It's got a nice sort of aesthetic look to it, hasn't it? A, quite a pleasing look to it. So uh, there's that. Then, um, yeah, rounded corners. That's quite versatile. It can be on all corners or just one of them or two of them or three of them or whatever. So that's pretty great. Uh, more with text overlays as well. So they can slide in now from the left or right as they could before, but also from the top and bottom. So if you're animating text on the screen, by the way, the animation that I've got down here, uh, that's I'm running that in Keynote, which was obviously what my uh, last video was about, or one of my last videos. Uh, so I'm running this as a screen share overlay, but we'll we'll come to that in a minute. Um, what else can you do with uh, with formatting? Uh, so well, cropping as well, cropping overlays, and uh, it makes it much easier to. Uh, you could always resize and have a custom size for your camera overlays and things like that. But now to just be able to crop into them uh, and resizing sizing them is uh, is easier now. You can just drag it on the side of the image and drag it and it will resize the uh, the whole thing uh, whereas before you had to drag the corner and it was always a real pain to be honest because if you got near the edge where like where the buttons were then you'd have to hide the ui and then grab them and it was just a little bit finicky to uh, to actually grab those corners sometimes when you're organizing things uh also now support for cut copy and paste of scenes and overlays so that is uh, that makes things a lot easier as well and also the thing about that is you can cut copy and paste between profiles as well which is obviously another new the new feature of the profiles feature but uh, it means that you can yeah just copy stuff between your profiles which is really uh, really useful uh what else did they add uh, this is quite a long list <laughs> uh so yeah resizing duplicating uh, oh that's so that's it yeah you've got a contextual menu on the layers so you can actually send them a bit like you could do in you know photoshop or an editing uh, photo editing thing where you could you can basically move st stuff back in the stack so you can do that from the contextual menu uh, menu <laughs> uh you can also obviously do it in the overlays panel by dragging things up and down the list and that just sort of arranges where they are in this stack uh, the other thing is the uh, adding stroke to the outside of things. So uh, like a border, like I've got around the, uh, the, the, the camera here as well. Uh, as I say, this is a graphical overlay, but you can get the same effect now with uh, just with the camera overlay. So um, yeah, that, that's why I think that these, uh, these sort of graphical overlays like I'm using here at the moment are going to be pretty much redundant because you can just build it all in Ecamm. And I'm sure, well, I can't wait to see what else they're going to do in the next, <laughs> after this release, what they're going to iterate on next because it's just, uh, it's just massive. <laughs> So uh, let's have a little look what else they've got. So they've got another, another couple of things. This is something I haven't used, but they've got um, uh, widgets, HTML widgets that you can now run locally. So before you could always like import things. So you could have little uh, widgets that pop up, you know, when you get new subscribers or things like that. Um, but uh, now you can actually create HTML widgets, have them locally and have them running. So uh, that's something I'm definitely going to play around with. I've never actually uh, built any of those, but uh, I, I was going to say obviously, but I do know about creating things in html so it'd be interesting to actually play around with that a nice little uh, nice little project a uh, couple of extra fi 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 fixes <laughs> uh keeping the widgets running in the background which was uh which was a good one because it was always a case of when you if you activated a widget overlay so like for example my buy me a coffee link uh if i activate that overlay then it used to take a little while to just sort of load up before it'd appear on screen whereas now you can have it so that it's continually running in the background and then when you toggle that overlay on it just appears with no load time so that's quite useful um so yeah lots of basically formatting things for the way that you can control the way things look on the screen and uh, these are the ones that i think are going to make as i say most of the overlays redundant uh, and so the uh, the next one is the big one <laughs> screen sharing overlays and all of the things they've done in that that was just it was always a, a, a pain point for me, to be honest, trying to explain to people how to uh, do screen sharing in Ecamm Live well, because they only really had the option of uh, sharing the, the, the screen as a uh, like full frame. And then you could always put the camera in and do picture in picture and then swap them around so that the screen sharing bit was picture in picture. But it was a bit of a bit of a workaround, really, that was because uh, it meant that when I'd got like my sort of uh, traditional I say traditional my usual sort of screen sharing shot where I've got my screen and then I've got my little picture up in the top corner the uh, the the picture of the screen was basically a picture in picture behind that was full screen like my camera and then I'd got my other camera uh, overlay over the top of it and, a, and a, an image overlay over the top of that so it was a bit of a workaround really because it meant you'd always got this secondary camera thing running in the background whereas now just to be able to add the camera overlay as uh, the, the sorry the screen sharing as an overlay 
and then add in all of these little features it means you can do things well like that one that I did with my little stats where uh, let me just bring that up again quickly <laughs> just to show so this thing where I got these stats up so that is just basically a little cropped in version of a specific portion of the screen uh, and then you can still see my mouse over it where you're not sharing the whole screen I'm also not sharing the whole app because that's just a little portion of the uh, the YouTube studio on uh, running on Chrome so uh, that's really great uh, the one thing that they haven't got in there at the moment this was the thing that actually I put in as a feature request is when you are sharing the entire screen as a uh, the source of the scene is a screen sharing there's an option that you can toggle in the uh, in the settings to show and hide um, or to, to show all of the uh, the ecam windows as well now if you're doing stuff full screen then you can obviously do this in demo mode as well you just do demo mode and then everyone can see everything but my specific use cases sometimes when I'm doing my demos I want to show a specific window or a specific part of the Ecamm Live interface so it would be great to have a screen sharing overlay but then crop in to just that window the only problem is that little toggle that you've got in the preferences for Ecamm Live where it shows all of the Ecamm windows it only works if you've got the the sort of the source of the scene is the uh, the screen sharing it doesn't work if you with screen sharing overlays at the moment so uh, or at least it hasn't been for me so I've put that in as a uh, as a feature request anyway or uh, I actually submitted it as a bug but then it turns out uh, I think it was Ken or Glenn said uh, oh, it only works with the uh, the main sort of screen sharing as opposed to screen sharing overlays but yeah adding in this feature is uh, with the uh, being able to just add in screen sharing is uh, is brilliant as an overlay and then with the latest beta obviously this is what my whole recent series is about uh, about green screen with it this is another thing that I'd made uh, videos about before with how I used it with Keynote and there were lots of ways you could get Keynote into uh, into Ecamm and have this effect so I did it previously with a uh, NDI source and then had that as the camera overlay so it was basically achieving the same effect but using NDI but I'm not a fan of NDI to be honest I don't like the way it behaves sometimes with uh, when you're doing screen sharing like that so you can shut down uh, sometimes if you shut down the uh, uh, the the window so the keynote window for example then it sort of totally lose it NDI seems to lose that uh, that that window so if you open it back up again then you have to go and reset NDI or set that window as the NDI source again and it's just a bit of a pain whereas this one you can just toggle it on and off it's uh, it's quite quite easy and intuitive the other thing that I found with NDI uh, doing it that way and I don't quite know why this should be but it always seemed as though when I did that with uh, using NDI and bringing a keynote presentation into Ecamm uh, and then toggle the green screen on I always found that it sort of affected the colors more than this one so this one the color that I'm getting now in this uh, in this image below um, is like as is as it should be it's accurate whereas when I did it over as a camera overlay using NDI this uh, sort of like bluey color here that's in this sort of banner um, would have been affected slightly because it's got a slight elements of green in it so it's as if um, I don't know the way to I don't know the technical reason why this would be but it's almost as if the keying is like more sort of precise I want to say that word precise for um, just removing just the green rather than other colors around it so uh, yeah don't know if, I don't know why that is but it just certainly does seem a lot better but to have it integrated in any case as a uh, as a feature where you just toggle it on and off is just uh, uh, pretty amazing really <laughs> uh, the other thing that this is great for is for um, uh, like when you're having transitions and things like that then you could do those in Keynote now the other feature request that I put in which uh, I don't know how trivial this is to do um, was to basically have the same little toggle for the green screen um, for video overlays because this is great because you can bring in keynote presentations and so my specific use case for this is going to be when I'm doing more like presentation stuff either on zoom or for course material that I make uh, rather than the YouTube channel but it does mean that I've got keynote running now and all of these little transitions that I've got running are live transitions in keynote well if you think about making like a uh, some sort of stinger or something like that that comes across the screen to uh, go between scenes and things like that if we could uh, if we could make those in keynote which you can obviously and that's going to be one of my videos this week as well um, but then export them uh, as videos and just bring them into um, uh, Ecamm and just toggle the green screen there it would make uh, a lot of uh, a lot of sense uh, but again I don't know how trivial that is whereas at the moment I have to export it then I have to remove the green and then I have to bring it into the uh, the scene 
obviously you can do uh, slides with a transparent background uh, and so if you've only got some basic stuff on the screen then that would work but it wouldn't work to do what I'm doing here where it's actually animating the uh, the green components because what you can't do is sort of uh, subtract from the, the background during an animation you can only sort of say right well here's the uh, the writing I want to subtract this from the shape behind but it's sort of like a static thing then so uh, so yeah being able to have green screen working with uh, 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 movies would be great and it would just mean you could just bring a movie in that's got like green elements and just remove them with a little uh, toggle so uh, that's me wishing <laughs> we'll see if it makes it in though so uh, so yeah screen sharing is pretty uh, amazing um, next we had, what was it uh, on my list? Cameras. So um, there's a few things being added. So camera effects. I know there's, uh, there's still a couple of feature requests that we're waiting for. Michael, I'm talking with you. <laughs> uh, so the first one though is the camera effects window. We've got um, a thing where if you set up your camera effects because they are remembered on a scene by scene basis so if you've got a camera in you can tweak things like the color the brightness the temperature and all that sort of stuff um, and it's just for that particular scene um, but now there's a little button so you can basically just apply this to all scenes which is great because it means obviously if you are do want to make changes to your camera then you can just set it up in one scene and then apply to all scenes so that's quite handy um, you've also got a button to rotate so you can rotate your cameras by uh, 90 degrees or whatever you do silly things like that <laughs> uh, that's useful though with things like overhead shots where you might have your camera positioned and the way that it's mounted or whatever you want to be able to rotate it so that's definitely something that uh, something I've had before with an overhead so uh, that would be useful uh, and then we've got things just little tweaks really about how you can uh, when you zoom in you can constrain things onto an axis so if I sort of zoom in a little bit uh, before you can always pan around like this but now if you just hold shift down it will just keep it on a particular axis so that's uh, that's quite useful i think uh so yeah these are sort of like little minor uh, sort of tweaks that actually do make a difference and add up to sort of really quite an amazing uh, update overall uh, so what else did they add in uh oh support for some other cameras some of the newer cameras that have come out over usb uh so i mentioned that in my uh, my other video but um yes yeah, uh, for the a6600 the zve10 dsc a7s and fujifilm fgx 100s <laughs> so those now just work when you plug in a usb cable they just work over usb uh, which is uh, great um and then network cameras as well was something else they added in and then they've updated the virtual camera but i've i've I use the virtual camera every day uh, many times a day um, but it's uh, i've not noticed anything i've not noticed what they've done so it must be just something like under the hood as it were uh, so that is the uh, the camera updates uh, next is uh, for streaming uh, so now you can stream to Twitter. Now I've got to find out what uh, what happened with this because I did actually add, add in my Twitter credentials and then uh, went to try going live and it said I couldn't stream to it live. So I've got to just go and check. Now, I just haven't had time to go in. I don't know if it completed the sort of authentication process. So I just need to log into Twitter and uh, see, uh, see, see what I can figure out about it. But certainly streaming to Twitter is, uh, is a thing. So uh, that's been added in. They've also added in a couple of other little things like the... Um, uh, uh, twi uh, Twitch ingestion selection so you can just select which server like local to where you are you're selecting so uh, or you're, you're streaming through so as we already had with the LinkedIn and the, uh, the the Facebook one I think had that as well so that is that the next thing is interview mode big updates in there in terms of the way that works I mean the I think it was, was that beta 2 or beta 1 I can't remember now it's quite a while ago and there's been so many but um yeah that's added some uh, things so you can like customize your link title and things like that uh it's added in the chat for interview chat so when you've got people on the interview you've got a, per, uh, a sort of um, a chat between the people on the on the interview as well and then what else did it add uh customization of the links title oh you've got that oh and then also being able to sort of brand the links that you send out to people as well you can add in your um obviously your domain and things like that into it or your name rather so customize the link but then you can also add your image for the uh, you know how it shows up when you send it out in and messages and things like that uh and then also what did they add as well there was uh, oh, also the logo so when the, the person on the other side is logging in uh it's got your sort of branding and logo on that actual the actual sort of login page for the interviewee as well so that's uh, that's pretty uh, pretty great and then uh, finally what we've got is uh, stream deck so they've added some new uh, stream deck functionality 
Uh, what did they add? The mute. So you've now got, uh, with the mute key, you can now mute specific uh, interviewees or uh, guests on the show, I should say. Um, so you can set the key to, to mute guests one, two, and three, and four, and so on. Um, they've also added in a play animated overlay button. So before you always had show and hide overlays. There was just a bit of a quirk with that, though, because if you had a video that ran to you know a blank screen at the end or something like that, if you just use the show overlay button, it would play the video and then it would go to the end where it was blank and then it would stay on screen. So if you wanted to play that again, uh, when you press the button, it would actually have the effect of just hiding it. So you'd have to press the button again to get it to show again. So the, uh, the, uh, the animated overlay button, basically it will just play the, uh, the animation regardless of if it is currently technically visible as an overlay uh, or not. So whether or not the overlay itself is toggled on, uh, it will just play the video. So uh, that sort of fixes that problem. Uh, there's, then there's a few, three that basically, or two that I'd had uh, before as multi actions. So I had to have a multi action to switch to uh, Ecamm and then toggle the keyboard shortcut. And so one of those was de uh, live demo mode. So now it's just a button for that. Uh, and then also there's one to show and hide the window controls that are over the top of Ecamm. So uh, that's handy if you're doing sort of, you know, before you're actually live or recording, you're just sort of adjusting layouts and things. It's kind of good to just get all of the controls off the screen uh, and so there's a button for that and then they've also got one to show and hide the uh, the most recent comment as well well there you go that is the roundup of uh, all of the features I'm sure to be honest I might have missed one or two out of there because there was so many to go through in the list it was very easy for me to lose my place so <laughs> if you haven't checked out the videos that I've done where I actually go and demonstrate all those features definitely check those out they'll be in the description for beta 1 2 and 4 as I mentioned at the beginning beta 3 was just sort of a little uh, few little minor bug fixes and things like that so uh, yeah highly recommend you go and watch those and I've said it before and I'll say it again I think this release is going to be a real sort of game changer in terms of the way that people use Ecamm Live or the things rather that they can do with it. It actually takes it forward quite a few steps. Things before that we had to do uh, with a few little workarounds and complexity and stuff like that uh, can now just be done in the application itself. And certainly things like creating graphical overlays and stuff like that to sort of mask edges of the cameras and things like that, it's just all built in. So I think it makes it a lot more accessible for people where they're not necessarily going to need to sort of have uh, designed graphical overlays and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so uh, yeah, I will no doubt be making some videos about how to make the most <laughs> of all the new features once uh, once it's released as well. Uh, but in the meantime, like I say, check out those videos that I did of the, the betas themselves. Uh, and I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. If you've been using the beta, if you haven't, but you're looking forward to it, what is your favorite feature and all that sort of stuff. So definitely go and leave all of that down in the, uh, the comments down below. Always love to hear from everybody. Uh, and then also while you're down there, go and hit that like button as well <laughs> and share it with a friend if you've got a friend who uses Ecamm Live uh, and obviously subscribe and turn on notifications. Now, as I said at the beginning, this was an excerpt from my uh, live stream that I did today uh, and I do do a weekly live stream at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, on a Friday. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, look forward to catching some of you there. I'm also thinking because what happened at the end of this live stream was uh, or rather the sort of second half, if you like, when I had uh, people on, uh, joined by uh, Michael and Greg. Uh, they had a few questions for me about things related to Ecamm Live and so on. So what I thought I'd do as well is perhaps, uh, uh, I haven't actually scheduled this yet, but maybe also be doing start doing a sort of weekly Q&A where I just answer any questions about Ecamm Live or uh, any tech and things like that or automation. I've been doing a few videos about things like Keyboard Maestro and all that sort of stuff. So I'll perhaps set up a, uh, a Q&A uh, live stream as well. So if that sounds appealing to you, then I'd love to hear from you in the comments as well. And uh, maybe if some suggestions for times as well, because I do realize that I'm sort of uh, cutting out a certain segment of the world at the moment by doing the, the uh, live stream at the time that I do. So I know that most people in the UK and Europe are sort of in bed. <laughs> so I might look to do something that's a bit more uh, uh, European friendly <laughs> as, a, as a as a former European myself uh, maybe do something at a slightly different uh, time than normal but anyway yeah love to hear from you what you thought about think about that idea as well so do let me know about that uh, but in the meantime I shall uh, leave you now and uh, let you get onto some of more of these great videos that are coming up over on the uh, right hand side and I'll leave my Ecamm Live playlist over at the bottom right have a great day and I'll see you again soon